When I started talking about buying the new Samac Power Hammer, whether it was here on YouTube, on Instagram, Facebook, or just among other blacksmiths, there were always questions about why did you choose that particular hammer. So I thought I would take a few minutes and try to explain what my decision-making process was. Now, don't get your hopes up. There's not some grand revelation here on why I think this is the best power hammer for me and why I think you should rush right out and buy one and scrap all your other power hammers because it really isn't that simple or that big of a difference between this hammer and a lot of the other hammers out there. Now, when I bought the bull hammer about oh, 15 years ago or so, I don't remember exactly when I got it, there was a number of things that went into that decision. Part of it was that it was immediately available, and it was immediately available from somebody I knew, and it was close enough that I could drive to pick it up, and he had the ability to load it for me. And that makes a big difference when you're buying a piece of equipment like this. If you've got to worry about, now, how do I get it shipped across country? And then dealing with whether or not you have the equipment to load it, unload it, all that kind of stuff, starts to make the purchase more difficult. So convenience was one of the reasons I bought the bull hammer. The other was that it is not a self-contained hammer. It was an air-supplied hammer, and at the time we were living off-grid on solar power, and it was a very limited solar power system. And while that worked, you had to be very careful with what you put on the system. That's part of making that decision and living a lifestyle where you have to live off-grid is learning how to conserve energy. And unfortunately, in a blacksmith shop, that could be difficult. So I didn't have the electrical power available to run a self-contained hammer, even though at that time, that's what I would have preferred, because I've always liked the self-contained hammers. But the bull hammer would run off a gas-powered air compressor, so I bought a big gas-powered air compressor, and that ran the bull hammer. The truth is, between what I paid for the bull hammer and what I paid for the air compressor, it was probably very close to the price of a Samac hammer back then. They're a lot more expensive now, but for a few thousand dollars more, I might have been able to buy a self-contained hammer. I just didn't have the power to run it on. Even if we put all of the solar power into it, it never would have run that hammer. It just would have overloaded the system. So now that I'm in a position to replace the bull hammer and maybe get the style of hammer that I always wanted, which is a self-contained hammer, I no longer have the power issue. We're someplace that has power. We do hope to add solar panels here because we do like renewable energy, but there was power on the property. And running the shop full-time now, I really do need more abundant power than what I had in that shop at that time. So because I have the power available, I already know I can run the seven and a half horse motor. So that means I get to buy the hammer that I wish I had bought years ago. Why a self-contained hammer? It comes down to two things. It comes down to quality and control, and I guess those kind of go together. The self-contained hammers, just a feather difference on the treadle makes all the difference in the world in how hard it hits. You could probably tap an egg and crack the shell without squishing and splattering the egg inside if you really know your hammer and have that precision control on the end of your foot when you're running it. And the air-supplied hammers, what's often referred to as a utility hammer, I just don't feel has that control. The utility hammers tend to start off cycling slowly and not a full stroke. And as you increase the stroke, it increases the speed. And as you increase the speed, it increases the force. And pretty soon, it's striking nice hard blows. And if you increase the speed a little bit more, Pretty soon it's just tap dancing on the dies and you're really not doing anything. So there's a real fine point there where you're getting good control, but not a full stroke. And that gets really annoying. I don't think it performs as well. You don't get as hard a hit at full speed as a result of that. So it's a real kind of balancing act. It's a give and take between having a hammer that strikes a lot of blows per minute and having one that hits hard. Now, the utility hammers do have the advantage that most of them will strike a single blow. You step on the treadle one time, it strikes one blow. It's just sitting there waiting to do its job until you give it some air. On the other hand, the self-contained hammers, once you turn the power on and that air, internal air compressor is running, every stroke of the piston provides enough air to drive the ram one time. 
So the flywheel that drives the piston on this new hammer goes around 220 times a minute. That means when it's running, the ram is going up 220 times a minute. What gives it control is what's happening while it's running 220 times a minute. If you're not stepping on the treadle, most of the air is being exhausted and the length of travel is just a little bit and they, they idle. They go up and down just a little and as you step on it, that stroke is longer and longer. And so if you're trying to get light blows, you just increase the stroke until it's giving light blows, but it's still going to be light blows at 220 strokes a minute. If you want heavier blows, you give it a little bit more pressure and you still get heavy blows at 220 a minute and you get full stroke on the ram every time. It doesn't start to shorten up and tap dance on the work. You get the full stroke. So it, if you step that treadle all the way to the floor, you're getting full power of the hammer at full speed every time. So that's one of the reasons I want the self-contained hammer. I feel it has more control, more power, more predictable. There are some trade-offs like giving up that single blow capability, but I think you can pretty much replicate that by stepping on the treadle, increase the length of travel of the ram until it's almost ready to strike, give a little flick on the treadle, it'll strike the next blow full force, and then you can let off of it. But it's a learned skill, and this will take some new skill development to be able to use this hammer efficiently. So there'll be a bit of a learning curve with it because it will not be exactly like using the old bowl hammer. I think I've mentioned before that there are other self-contained hammers out there. There's a lot of old ones. They were really quite the common thing when blacksmiths were more common and there was more industrial forging by small shops going on. In this country, the old nasels are the, the hammer that everybody wants, but nasels and eries and chambersburgs are all good self-contained hammers. Problem is, they're all old and they're hard to come by. People that have good ones don't want to give them up. And the ones that are available generally need some sort of work. And I just don't have time to do that nor do I have a background that really makes me the person to do that. I would have to hire somebody to come work on it, and while that would be possible, it's not real practical because I need to get a hammer up and running as fast as I can. So buying an old Nasel, Erie, Chambersburg, or importing a Massey from England just really isn't the practical thing for me at this point. Plus, they tend to take up a lot more room in the shop. A big Nasel, and they, some of them are very big, they, I know somebody with a 500 pound nasal power hammer. It took 27 yards of concrete to make the base for it. It's a big hammer with a big foundation. When it's idling, just cycling up and down, waiting for somebody to tell it to hammer, you can feel it in the ground outside the shop, even though it's got a 27 cubic yard concrete base under it. So they're impressive hammers, they are awesome. And Nazel did make smaller ones. You can get one that's down around the, the 100 pound range about what this hammer is. But I think there's still bigger pieces of furniture to put in the shop. And again, finding a, a used one that is in great shape, ready to go to work, is difficult. As far as new self-contained hammers go in the United States, there are really only two options available right now. That's the Samac and the Anyang. And the Anyang is not a bad hammer. They are, are good hammers. Uh, I understand they're based on a British hammer that the Chinese had available. And they found out what made that hammer work. And various companies like, uh, like Stryker, and I don't think Stryker hammers are still available in the U.S. anymore. And Anyang made hammers based on that old British hammer. Very similar to a Nazel, and they make them in lots of different sizes. I think they make one that might be as small as a 33 pound hammer, and that would be easy to find room for in my shop, but it's smaller than what I want. And they make big industrial hammers that would never fit in my shop. They'd be as big as my shop. So there's lots of options available in the Anyang hammers, and they are good hammers. They are still a self-contained hammer. They still have that precision control. They still strike full speed at full stroke. They have similar die changing capabilities. The dies in both hammers are held on with a wedge key, which is very typical in power hammers of this nature. So the decision really comes down to why Samac over Anyang. 
Well, I have to admit, part of it is I was always somewhat enamored with the old German-style air hammers, the old Coons that Centaur Forge used to sell. And back in the day, I really wanted to go in debt and buy a Coon air hammer when I was first starting out. And of course, I was smart enough not to do that, but I've always sort of wanted that Coon air hammer. And the same Mac hammer is based on those old German power hammers. It's made in Turkey instead of Germany, but it's the same style of hammer. So that's part of it. There's really no huge difference functionality-wise between the same Mac and the Ang Yang, although occasionally you do hear somebody grumble a little bit about this, that, or the other thing on the Ang Yang hammers. Nothing very serious. I think it's all stuff that can be fixed. And I think a lot of it the importer has taken care of and make sure it is fixed and working properly before you ever get the hammer. So they're not a bad choice for you to buy. But I have never heard anybody complain about their Samac. Everybody that I've ever talked to that owns a Samac power hammer loves them. And those are some of those people have been using them for 15 or 20 years. And they are still happy with their purchase, still say it was a great thing to buy. And that means a lot to me. So that's one of the reasons that I went with the Samac. Another reason is that the Samac dealer is in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I'm in Southern Colorado, so Santa Fe is about a five hour drive. We were able to drive to Santa Fe, talk to Helmut Hillenkamp, who is the importer of the hammers, and he runs a, an ornamental iron shop, so he uses these exact same hammers in his shop. He has four of these hammers set up to work in his big shop, and he uses these day in and day out. He knows them very well. He's been using them for a long time. So by being able to go down and talk to Helmut in person, and get a chance to actually use the hammers. You saw in the very first video some pictures of me using a couple of the different hammers, both the 50 kilogram and the 60 kilogram version of the hammer. And that way I got a chance to actually experience a hammer, see what they could do, see how the die system works, talk to them about what dies were available, what hammer would suit me the best, what the sizes of the hammer, the power requirements. I could discuss all that in person while I was getting some experience with a hammer and seeing if I liked the way they performed. Now I could do that with the Ain Yang hammer. I'm sure I could talk to the importer of those hammers and I could go to his shop, but he's not within a day's drive. So it's much more convenient for me to buy the Samac. And that's not a big issue. If there had been some reason that I wasn't sure about the Samac in the first place, I probably would have taken an three or four days to go try out an Ain Yang or found a shop in the area that had the Ain Yang available for me to try out. So it's not a huge issue, but it certainly played into the decision-making process. Another advantage of dealing with somebody that close is that he charges the same rate for shipping no matter where the hammer is going in the continental United States. That generally means putting it on a truck and you then have to coordinate with a trucking company to get the hammer and then it's your problem once the hammer shows up and you have to get it set and installed and make sure it's running properly. Because Helmet is so close, for that same price he will deliver the hammer personally, he will help me install it, he will make sure that it is adjusted, tuned up and working properly after the install before he leaves. And that is a really big benefit to dealing with somebody that's close enough to do that. I realize most of you wouldn't have that option. Most of you are not within five or six hours of Santa Fe. But if you're within five or six hours of the person selling you the equipment, that might be something you can coordinate with them. Now, as far as which model of Samac I bought, I honestly went planning to buy the 50K model, the 50 kilogram. So that's a 110 pound nominal ram weight. And I tried that hammer out and I liked it. It was a good hammer. It did everything I would want a hammer to do. There was no reason to even try the 60. But heck, you're there. You might as well try the 60 kilogram hammer too. And oh my, what a difference. It seemed like it hit twice as hard for only 20 pounds or so more ram weight. So that's an awesome hammer. And I was still thinking, well, this is awesome, but I probably ought to buy the other one. It's less money. And because this hammer isn't being funded out of shop profits, unfortunately, it's being funded out of household savings, I thought the spending the lower amount would go over better with the uh, other person I had to coordinate the purchase with. I had finished the heat that I was working on and I had stepped away from the hammer. My wife was on the other side of the shop 
with her eyes big and she was doing this and signaling pretty clearly that that's the hammer she wanted to see in the shop. So we discussed it and decided that there was just no reason not to spend a little bit extra now and not regret having bought something a little bit smaller and then wishing we had bought the bigger one later. Luckily, my wife is an enabler when it comes to tools. When I bought my first power hammer, the 50 pound little giant, we were just dating then, we hadn't gotten married, and I called her and said, well, I found this hammer, it's sort of expensive, I don't think I should buy it, and I was kind of hoping she'd talk me out of it. Instead, she said, I think you ought to get it. And that's sort of the way our relationship has been since. So I'm not trying to rub that in for those of you who have to fight and argue to get a little bit of funding for something like this, but it does help if the other people that are part of the financial decisions have somewhat of the same vision that you have. Now, Helmet also had two 75 kilogram hammers in the shop, and those, I believe, are the only two 75K hammers in the United States. And they, they are test hammers. They are hammers that he is working on, and he says they just aren't really quite as good as they should be, that there is something lacking when you go from 60K to 75K. So for right now, the 75K CMAC is not available for sale in the US. Helmet is not importing them until they get all of the little details right. But he is working with CMAC. He does travel to Turkey to work with the factory on making improvements to the hammer. Which brings up another point in CMAC's favor, that, and I can't speak on whether An Yang has ever done this or not, but when Tom Clark was selling the same Mac hammers before he passed away. He worked very closely with the factory. And Phil Cox, who is a master at power hammer mechanics, both air hammers and mechanical hammers, unfortunately he's passed away recently, also worked with the factory. So they, they looked at things, they said, this could be better, that could be better. The factory listened to blacksmiths on what would make these hammers better, and they made the changes. So these hammers have really evolved. People who have had these hammers for 15 or 20 years love them. The hammers today are better and more advanced than they were back then. And the little tweaks, the little differences are really improvements. They aren't trying to cut corners or increase production efficiency. They're making a better hammer at all cost. And that means that I'm buying the best hammer that Samac has ever made. So if you were one of those who was wondering why I chose a Samac over an An Yang or a Big Blue or a KA75 or any of those other hammers out there, I hope that answered your question. In the long run, it comes down to personal preference. There's nothing wrong with those other hammers. There's nothing wrong with the bull hammer design other than I wore mine out. If I fixed it, it would still be a good usable hammer, just not really the hammer that I've always wanted. So this was an opportunity for me to buy the hammer I've always wanted. If you're looking for a power hammer, you should buy the hammer you've always wanted if you can afford it. And if you buy something that's a little bit cheaper now, a little bit easier to come by, don't give up on your dreams because someday it might happen. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that and give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around and watch some of the other videos. Sometime in the next week or so, we will have the addition finished and it'll be ready for a power hammer. And then we'll just be waiting for Helmet to get everything set up on his end so he can make the delivery, which is probably about three weeks away at this point. So it's still going to be a little while before we see this hammer up and operating in the shop. So take care. Have a good day. We'll see you later. Bye.